picture today. Uh, just a few lines. I needed to confirm if you guys are hearing me clearly. You guys hear me clearly? Yes. Thank you so much. So I want to welcome everyone to my lecture today. Uh, the focus uh, today uh, is basically going to be on central limit theorem, which means um, earlier in the week, we started what we call a sampling distribution. And of course, I walk you through uh, some sampling uh, process. For instance, we are actually looking for population parameter. And um, what we normally end up doing is to take sample from the population. Uh, we estimate and uh, uh, you know the population parameter. And at the end of the day, um, we actually use what we get to represent, you know, the population parameter. And um, I want to say, with a sampling distribution, uh, that gave us opportunity to make a statistical inference. You know, statistical inference is a way of generalizing on the overall population based on sample information, okay? So, and I walk you through uh, situations where we actually want to make it, we actually um, want to conduct a study and um, we are different researchers, we get different results. I believe with a sampling distribution, of course, uh, we're able to harmonize situation. So today, uh, the objective today is actually, how do we use the properties of the central limit theorem to estimate the means and the standard deviation of the sampling distribution of sample mean? Okay, we are not gonna, uh, I'm not gonna walk you that of sample proportions today. We, the, for the focus is just gonna be on the mean. And we're also going to learn how to use central limit theorem to find probabilities for sample means. Before, when we're dealing with normal distribution, of course, we learn how to find probability with normal distribution by obtaining a z-score. But today, we're, still going, we're going to revisit the knowledge of z-score only that the probability that we want to find this time around is a is probability of the sample means because sample means now become random variable i told you the other time when when 20 researchers is to conduct a study on a part on the same topic they're going to have different values for means okay and because, because we are having different values for means, the sample mean become random variable. Then we can, be, we can now begin to answer a question that has to do with what is the probability that a sample mean will be less than something? What is the probability that a sample mean will be greater than a particular value? What is the probability that a sample mean will lies between Okay, we're going to answer that. I'm going to walk you through that kind of question today. Uh, and you know what? Because of that, we're going to have a, a modified fraction of a Z score. I, I want to tell you the difference between this Z score, this Z score formula, and the one I've worked you with before. The, this, the one I, we did before is X minus mean over standard deviation. I'm, I'm, as, I'm actually seeing that as that one is for the random variable X. But the one here, X is no longer a random variable, but sample mean is a random variable because we have different values for sample means. 
Therefore, the z-score here is going to be sample mean minus the mean of the sampling distribution of the mean divided by the standard deviation of the means. The standard deviation of the means is what we call the standard error. And that is standard deviation divided by the square root of the sample size. You know, I'm just trying to let you, you know, I'm trying to make sure you see the difference between the z-score we actually want to use to find probability that has to do with sample means and the z-score that we used before when the interest was not on the sample mean, but the interest was on individual x, just on the random variable x. And let me tell you this. Before we can actually compute this, we got a condition. Before we computed the z-score that I walked you through earlier, uh, maybe in the month, there was no any special requirements. But now for this, when we're working on the sample means, we got a requirement because we're actually going to see, investigate, whether the central limit theorem applies. And of course, I give you a condition under which the central limit theorem applies. We must, even though that we know we are not going to study an entire element in the population, we know we're going to take sample, but the sample has to be sufficiently large. And how large is the sample? How large is it large? It has to be at least story. Okay, that is the central limit theorem. Before we can compute this z-score, okay, the central limit theorem have to apply. Okay, in that situation, we're going to identify the component of the z-score for this kind of situation from any given data set you need to identify what is your sample mean? What is your population mean? What is your population standard deviation? And what is the sample size that you are actually using to create the sampling distribution? So I wanted to take note of this before we go into an example right now. Right now, we basically, want to answer probability question that has to do with sample mean, not an individual X, sample mean, okay? That is what we actually want to do right now. So I'm gonna walk you through an example. This is the first example. The first example here is finding the probability that a sample mean will be less than a given value. I told you the other time, a question could be on finding the probability that sample mean will be less than or greater than or lies between, okay, and so on like that. Now, this particular example is actually asking us to figure out the probability that a sample mean will be less or equal to a particular number. And let's walk through the example. According to the Center for Disease Control and Prevention, CDC, the mean total cholesterol level for persons 20 years of age and older in the United States from 2007 to 2010 was 197 mg per DL, okay? This is coming from CDC. Now, if you take a look at the value that is given here, an investigation has not been conducted. It's, uh, you know, CDC has this value probably through their own investigation, but you know what? What is the probability that a randomly selected adult from the population 
we have a total cholesterol level, you know, less than 183. Take a look at that. You have a CDC standard, and you now want to find a probability that an, an individual will have a total cholesterol level less than a particular value. Now, it's a use standard deviation of 35 mg per dl and assume that the cholesterol level for the population are normally distributed. I want you to take a look at this. It's, ask, it's asking you to assume you know, whether central limit theorem applies or not, this is what happens if, if the original population is already normal. Of course, the central limit theorem applies. But if it is not normal, before central limit theorem can apply there, you must be taking sufficiently large sample. And what is, how large is a large? It has to be at least story. Now, the next question uh, is now saying, what is the probability that the randomly selected sample of 150 adults from the population, we have a mean total cholesterol level of less than 183. Due to the standard deviation of that, there's something I wanted to say between question A and question B. Question A is talking about a particular adult choosing from the population. Now, if I want to solve this, I want to tell you this. Question A is not talking about sample mean, but it's talking about a particular person. And this is the same as the one we did before. Why I'm bringing this now, I just wanted to say the difference between two different kinds of Z-scores, the one that applies to an individual and the one that applies to sample mean. Now, right now, because they mention individual, we are actually going to use this, uh, you know, um, the Z score that applies to individual, and that is just going to be X minus mean divided by the standard deviation. Of course, you've been given the values, right, for the uh, for the for that person, the total cholesterol of that person. And they have, and they won't give in by the CDC. Now, I want you to take note of this. Uh, mu, the mean, that population mean is the one from CDC. The one from CDC is a population mean. Take a look at that. So, we want to find the probability that it's total cholesterol of a randomly selected adult from this population, we have a total cholesterol level less than 183, you know, given that we know that the CDC average is 197 and the standard deviation is 35. Now we are getting the ZD, uh, Z score now. Now we got a Z score of minus 0 0.40. All what is, well, what you need to do, it now is a matter of choice. Maybe you want to make it of our software, or you want to make use of a statistical table, or you want to make use or make use of a calculator. So uh, all we're going to do now is just to find that. If you want to make use of uh, statistical software, it's just going to be since we are talking about less than, it's just going to be p norm of minus is zero point four zero. P norm of minus is zero point four zero. Then you're going to get the result. But I want to tell you, the result is actually 0 0.3446. Okay, that is to the left, right? And if you want to use calculator, okay, you follow this guy. Because we're dealing with the less than, there's going to be no more CDM. Then you start from the lower uh, part of the infinity because we're talking about less than. Then you're going to indicate the value 183, then you're going to indicate the population mean and the standard deviation. And of course, the calculator is just going to give you that result. And if you want to check from the statistical table, normal distribution, of course, you need to check uh, the values of uh, minus 0 0.40. 
then you is actually going to give you this. Now, that is how to go about the first part. But when you look at the second part of the question, we're no longer talking about an individual, okay? Instead of talking about an individual, we're talking about the sample mean. And the Z formula is actually going to change. So what I'm demonstrating to you now, there is a difference between um, the Z score for an individual and the Z score for sample mean. The one for the sample mean is just going to be sample mean minus this uh, mean, population mean divided by the standard error. The standard error is actually going to be the standard deviation divided by the square root of the sample size. All what you just need to do is to plug in the values once again, this time around, when they, are, when they give you sample mean, automatically they have to give you the sample size. Because without sample size, there's no way you can compute sample mean. I'm going to say that again. Without sample size, you can't, you, can't, you can't compute sample mean. So if you look at the question in B, okay, uh, you're actually going to see that, um, uh, let me uh, walk you back a little bit to the question. Uh, you're going to see that all, all those ones are given. Take a look at that. We said, what is the probability that a randomly selected sample of 150 adults they have to, that is, since we are, uh, you are talking about more than an individual, you can only get sample mean if you have more than, when the sample size is more than one. Then they need to give you the sample size, which they've already given in this case. And all what you're just going to do is just, uh, so if you want to have more information, I got that from the Center for Disease Control and Profession. Cholesterol National Center for Excel Statistics on um, 16 May 2012. Okay, now, if I go into the formula now, I'm just going to plug in uh, the values. That give me minus 4.90. Of course, um, I, can, I can make use of the table, make use of PNOM, whatever. Okay, but you make use of PNOM, of course, it's going to be approximately zero, whatever you choose, whether you want to check from the statistical table or uh, you know, using the R software or whatever. So that's what you're going to get. Okay. And you know, um, that probability actually gives us 0, 0.00. What does that mean? You know, we're trying to say the probability that the sum, if the CDC average is 197 for the cholesterol level, and we want to find the probability that, um, you know, the sample mean we actually, of the cholesterol, we actually be less than 183. For you to have a 0 0.000, what that is trying to say, that may not be possible. That was why I said, thus, the probability of randomly selected sample of 150 US adults having a mean total cholesterol level less than 183 is approximately zero. Okay, which means it is very unlikely. Okay, but let me tell you something. When something is very unlikely, that doesn't mean it's not possible. The fact that the probability of occurrence of an event is very, very small does not mean it's actually, because that is 0, 0.000 there is an approximation. It is not just zero. So the fact that it is not exactly zero, then it means it has happened before. I'm going to say that again. When the probability of the occurrence of an event is one over one billion, even though the probability of it occurring is very small, but it can occur because it has occurred before. It has occurred one out of one billion before. Okay, so that's all we need. Okay. And then, you know, I think I'll show you how you can use calculator to do that. Now, I want to go to the next example that just walk you through when it is less than 
So what of in a situation where it is greater than, like this, elevators are required to have weight capacity posted. If the weight of US men are normally distributed with a mean of 194.7 pounds and a standard deviation of 32.0 pounds, what is the probability that a random group of 10 men who enter an elevator will have a combined weight greater than the weight of the capacity of 2,000 pounds that is posted in that elevator? If you take a look at this question, it's a question on greater than, even though the sample size is less than 30, but we have been told that the population is normally distributed, therefore the central limit theorem applies. Okay, now to have additional information, elevators are required to have a weight capacity posted. If the weight of uh, uh, US men, okay, I think I've already, now the, in the solution now, of course I told you, uh, even though the sample size is less than 10, but we have been told in the question that it is normally distributed. Therefore, we can still apply the central limit theorem. Okay, now the very first thing you're gonna do is since we're, we're talking about a combined total of, you know, the 10 men have a combined total of 2,000 pounds, it is better we know that of, a, that of one adult. And that was why I was dividing 2,000 by 10 and we get 200 pounds. When we have 200 pounds, we can actually restate the problem. Instead of us to be looking at a combined, we want to look at it on, a, on an individual basis. So we're going to say, what is the probability that a random group of 10 men, okay, have a mean weight greater than 200 pounds? Because what, uh, you know, initially the 2,000 pounds was not their mean weight. The 2,000 pounds was actually the total, the totality. And if you want to get the mean weight, you're actually going to use 10 to divide that because they are 10 in number. And that gives us 200. Now, if that gives us 200, what you want to find now is the probability of a sample mean greater than 200. That's what we want to find now. Now, if you take a look at this shape right now, okay, greater than 200, you know, to the right, that blue shaded region, that is what we actually want to find. And don't forget, uh, if that is what we want to find, we have been given in the question, the center, the population mean, right? Which is 194.7, okay? Well, what we're just gonna do is to go back to the Z-score. Okay, the Z-score is gonna be the one for sample mean. Don't forget when you are giving the total weight, you derive the sample mean yourself. Okay, just gonna plug that in. We got a Z-score. And because we're dealing with a greater than sign, you know, they say greater than, then the probability of the z-score is going to be greater than 0 0.52. What are we going to do when you are checking from the table? Whatever you check from the table, you're going to subtract from one. For those of you who are going to be using software, it's, going, it's basically going to be one minus p norm of 0 0.52. If you want to use your calculator, I think we have done that, that gives us 0 0.3015. But if you want to use your calculator, this is, this is the step. If you want to use your calculator, this is the step. You got to say greater than 200. The very first number that we appear in the calculator is going to be that number. Take a look at that, 200. Then followed by the positive infinity. Because you say two, greater than 200, you know, you are going to the right. Okay, that's how you have that that you're going to indicate. Your population mean of 194.7. Then this time around, you're going to indicate the standard error. Take a look at this guy here. The standard error is 32 divided by square root of 10. You remember sigma divided by root n. 
automatically the calculator will actually compute that for you. And that was what we got before. Okay, we have already looked at a situation whereby it could be less than, it could be greater than. We now want to go into a different kind of situation now. I want to find it, well, you know, this is like finding the probability that a sample mean we differ from the population mean by less than a given amount. The sample mean we differ from the population mean by less than a given amount. Now let's take a look at this example. Suppose that prices of women athletic shoes have a mean of $75.15 and a standard deviation of $17.89. What is the probability that the mean price of a random sample of 50 pairs of shoes, athletic, uh, I mean, of women athletic shoes, would differ from the population mean by less than $5? We differ from the population mean by less than $5. What are you going to do? We needed to, in this kind of situation, we needed to have two values where we're going to subtract $5 from, you know, the, the population mean reported. We're also going to add $5 to the population mean reported. And when you do that, that will give you 70.15 and 80.15. That is the first thing you're going to do when you want to answer a question that has to do with the DFA by. Okay, I'm going to say that again. The amount given, you're going to subtract from the population mean. The population mean here is $75.15 minus $5. That will give you 70.15. Then you're going to add $5 again to the 75.15. And that will give you 80.15. Now, what you want to find now, you want to find the probability, you know, of... Uh, the sample mean, you know, if only something lie between 70.15 and 80.15, this is automatically what you are looking for. The shaded region between 70.15 and 80.15 is what you are looking for. Then you needed to uh, actually get a Z score for each of that. There is Z score for the first one using that 70.15. You get that value, go to the second one, also get a Z score for the other one. You know, what is interesting here is that the two Z scores, they're gonna be the same, but one will be positive, then the other one will be negative. And that was why we got minus 1.98 and 1.98, okay? And if you use the technology, whatever available to you, you actually, going to, you know, you're going to look at the P norm of time and P norm of the other one. Of course, you're actually going to get your results, okay? And if you want to make use of, uh, you know, calculator, for those, you know, because in exam, I allow scientific calculator, I allow the use of R software, I allow the use of statistical table, and I allow to do that manually. So whatever choice, you know, we, we live in, we are in a free world. So you can do whatever that is, uh, that you are comfortable with. All what I want, I got it, I need a result. Now, take a look at this guy now. I want to use that. Of course, you're going to specify the, the lower part of the S, the upper part of S, the, uh, the, the, the population mean, and the standard error automatically. Your calculator is actually going to compute that. Now, the next example now, you know, we just consider an example where the state differ by, you know, uh, you know and I'm, you know, you know, differ less than. We now want to consider the one that will differ from the population mean by more than. How do we go about that one? Okay, the one we did, uh, you know, before now is when uh, the sample mean uh, differ from the population mean, okay, by less than a particular amount. What of if they say by more than? That's what we want to do now. Okay. At a local manufacturing plant, the screw beam manufacturers have a mean length of 1.625 inches. 
with a standard deviation of 0 0.01, 0 0.010 inches. If the quality control director randomly chooses a batch of 50 screws, what is the probability that their mean length differ from the mean of the population by more than the allowed 0 0.004 inches? Let me tell you, in every manufacturing uh, company, they, all, they have a quality control officer. The quality control officer will ensure that whatever that is, whatever that is produced conform to specification. What I know before they go into production, they have a target value. They know what they are targeting. And we have a, they have a way, you know, that's why the quality control officer is on ground to make sure that, you know, the, what they got, you know, they don't, don't, don't go beyond specification limit. But here, you want to find the probability that their mean length will differ from the mean of the population by more than allowed is 0 0.04, even though they know there's a variation, but the highest variation they want to allow is 0 0.004. Now we want to figure out the chance of the occurrence of that. If you want to do that, what I'm actually, what are you going to do now? Just like what we did in the other, in the previous example, you're actually going to subtract and add. What am I subtracting? What am I adding? I'm actually going to subtract the 0 0.004 from 1.625, which is the population mean. And I'm also going to add it. Now, this is what I'm looking for right now. Take a look at that. But if you look at what I'm looking for now, okay, you actually going to see that this is different from what I was looking for the other time. I'm going to show you the shape for the other time. Take a look at the uh, or shape. Uh, look at this right now, what we're looking for. And uh, look at the other one, what we're looking for. So the interest is on the tail, this time around, on the tail, the blue shaded region. The initially the different is bit, you know, is the one in the middle. Okay, but now the difference is not is on the tail. Okay, now when you take a look at this now, what we're going to do if you want to do this in R? Uh, uh, before you first of all get your Z score, okay, just like what we've been doing, get your Z score. And the z-score is actually 2.83, okay? And you're getting to z-score, okay? And I told you one is gonna be negative, the other one is gonna be positive, but they could, they're gonna see how the same uh, value. If you wanna compare this scenario, you know what you're gonna do? One minus p norm of the positive one multiplied by two. I'm gonna say that again. One minus p norm of the positive one, then whatever you get, you multiply by two. That is if you want to do that now. But if you don't want to do that now, um, you know, if you want to check, okay, you can see that you check for the first one, check the other one. Now you multiply by two, and that will give you 0 0.0046. And you know what? If you want to use calculator, take a look at the calculator. You know, I wanted to see the difference between, you know, I said, if you want to do this in R, it's actually going to be one minus P norm of the positive one you multiply by two. But if you want to do that using the calculator, okay, don't forget the one we're doing now. We are actually finding the probability that the sample mean will differ from the population mean by more than a given value. If I want to do that with the calculator, what I'm just going to do, I'm going to write two multiplied by normal CD here. Then the minus infinity, then the lower part, the upper part, that's difference they talk about. You know, the difference of 0, 0.0, uh, sorry, not another difference, the, uh, by the, uh, the standard error. So which is going to be, this is 0 0.1, 0 0.010 is the standard deviation divided by the square root of 50. So which means the whole of that is a standard error. I'm going to say that again. What you're actually going to specify in your calculator is going to be two multiplied by normal CDF, the minus infinity, 
the lower part, the upper part, and the standard error, automatically your result will be displayed. But if you don't want to use this, if you want to use R, you can do the P norm of the positive Z score, okay? One minus the P norm of the positive Z score multiplied by two. Now, with the, with the calculator, you see we are multiplying two by normal CDA of this when we're dealing with that of a less than the other time. I'm good. I just want to show you the difference using the calculator. Now, take a look at the difference using the calculator. We are now multiplying this by two when we are trying to figure out the probability that a sample mean will differ from the population mean by less than. You don't multiply by two when you're looking at the calculator, take a look at that. But what the first thing you're going to say here, because they are talking about less than, you're going to fall first right the lower bound, the upper bound, okay, the mean, and the standard and the standard error. But what you are doing now, in the case of when the sample mean will differ from the population mean by more than, you started from the negative infinity, and you write the lower part, the upper part, and the standard error, and that is it. You get your result. Okay. This is where I'm actually gonna stop today. And I also, I quickly wanna give an information for those of you that did a makeup, by now you have seen changes in your results. I infected that changes today. Okay, for those who did a makeup. And if you don't have any change to your result, you did a makeup, then it means probably you didn't score very well in the makeup. And that was why I did not even use that at all. Okay, and I also want to give this information that the midterm two practice question has been uploaded. I uploaded that today. So you can check. I think I, I, think I put 35 multiple choice questions. So in the exam, you know, the midterm one and the midterm two, they are going to be multiple choice, but it is only in the final exam that you're going to have the combination of a multiple choice and uh, an essay, okay, an essay uh, part, so short answer part, okay. So, um, the, the, like I said, the midterm two is not going to be cumulative. Make sure you check the announcement section. I think I, I, I think I sent everyone a study guide for the midterm two. And you know what? Next week, Monday. What we're going to do, I'm going to walk you through the midterm two practice questions. You know, some of you have been sending messages to me. When do I want to reveal uh, midterm one exam? Uh, I'm going to reveal midterm one exam and the midterm two exam when we are preparing for the final exam, because the final exam is actually going to be cumulative. Okay. Now, let me quickly add this before I go. The Meet and two practice questions that I uploaded some minute ago, I did not indicate correct. I did, I don't indicate which one is the correct answer. If I were you, take that exam on your own, solve it, then I'm going to release the result. I'm going to release the solution tomorrow. Okay, you can try if you have time. You can do it today without, I didn't put solution, I just put options. You get what I mean? So, you can try it and see what you're going to get. Because I used to advise students, you know, write exam before exam. When I was in college, I do I normally write exam before exam. We call that mock exam. It is the exam you can create, you can set yourself. Because that will enable you to measure your understanding of what you've been doing so far. You know, I used to tell people, you don't need to wait until problem come before you start solving problem. Create artificial problem. Don't create problem for people. Create statistical problem before statistical problem comes. And if you're able to, you know, solve it, then if, it pro if any problem comes, you are, you, are, you are likely going to solve it. So that's why you need to solve a problem before problem comes so that you will not going to be caught on a way. Okay, so make sure you stay safe. Have a lovely weekend and bye for now.